In this video, we're going to see how far back I can fight up the field after a massive mistake in qualifying saw me starting in dead last. Hey guys, and welcome along to another video. Now, if this is your first time here and you like watching all sorts of sim racing related stuff, subscribe now and click the bell icon so you get notified of every video I upload and you don't miss a thing. Now you join me here in Quali for the next FIA round at Yamagiwa. Now fuel saving as usual, as you would have seen by now in the last few videos that we've done. And I'm trying to stay out of everybody's way at the moment. Now I think this trend has caught on as everybody I think in this race was doing it at one point or another. But for those that don't know by now, my strategy for the FIA qualies is to have two flying laps at the very end of the session, mainly because if I only have one, I tend to bottle it. Before these laps, I try and burn as much fuel off as I can for the initial part of the session by doing exactly this. And by this, I mean going around in first gear, sitting just under that rev limiter so that it doesn't bounce off then I'm going to come into the pits for a new set of the tyres and I'm going to start my first of two flying laps on the next lap. Now I hope you're staying with me here. I need to leave at least 10 seconds on the clock more than the current pole time as I cross the line to start my first of two flying laps which will ensure I have enough time even if something goes wrong to squeeze that second lap in all whilst I have the lowest amount of fuel possible. But here, things went very, very wrong. At the end of this, my first flying lap, I go wide here coming out of turn 14 and I pick myself up a one second penalty. Now this wouldn't usually be a problem, as I would finish the lap, admittedly it wouldn't be my best because I'd been off, but I get an OK one on the board giving me a chance to have another crack next time round. But here at Yamagiwa, and the way the penalty gates are set up, they're at the start of the start-finish straight, meaning not only did the last lap that I made the mistake on not count, but I have to carry this penalty and serve it as I come through the gates on the next one. And considering I only allow myself two flying laps, this spelled the very end of any chance of a decent start position on the grid for this one. So as a result of the mistake that we've made in qualifying, I'm going to be starting the race, as I mentioned in the intro, in dead last. 20th out of 20. And 3.3 seconds off this guy, the pole sitter, McGee. And 1.7 seconds off this guy, Apollo Alex, in 19th. Although I am wearing door number 16, so it's a bit of a stronger lobby than before, and the game isn't expecting much for us in this one. The first 19 cars though were separated by only 1.6 seconds, so there should be lots of fighting up ahead, which should be to our benefit. I'm going to try and stay clean, not get any penalties unlike Quali, and our aim for this one is to try and fight back and bring home a top 10 finish. Let's see if I can do it. As the lights go green here, I get a mahoosive slide on straight out of the gate, not what I needed at all, and I'm going to drop as I cross the line to around a second behind 19th. Now as we come into the first sweeping left-hander here, as we start to make our way up the hill, this is where there is a prime place to pick up penalties. So I'm going to blip the throttle as I come up the hill here. In true Gran Turismo style, if you were to put one wheel off the track there, you'll get a penalty. And as we found out in qualifying, where the gates are placed, you do not want that. It will lose you way more than just ensuring a safe ascent by blipping the throttle, coming
coming up the hill. So I'm going to give the curbs there a very wide berth and let others be the ones to make mistakes and we're going to try and take advantage of those. Now Yamagima is definitely not one of my favourite tracks. There's nothing wrong with the track, it just isn't for me and I'm not that quick on it. As you can see here, I dropped to 1.2 seconds off the back. The top 10 finish in light of that could be a bit ambitious, but nobody has actually made any mistakes yet. But that is all going to change here as we come out of turn number 14 for the first time in this race. The orange Audi is going to go onto the dirt just like we did in Quali, and when coming back on, distract the sister Lexus who loses it. So we're up to 19th here, but soon to be 18th as he gets a slide on and hits us as we come out of the final turn. Thankfully no SR down or penalty for that one, but speaking of penalties, another person is going to get a penalty up ahead. A five second one, which is going to be absolutely game over for him or her. Now as we come up the hill here, we're behind a train of four cars from 13th to 17th. You can see they're battling up front. I'm going to try and keep it cool and under control as they battle. And even with the blip, I'm going to march right up to the back of them by the long left-hander of turn six. Now the yellow flags are going to come out here as the Austrian in the Ford. Yeah, I know it's Austrian. I googled it. Must have dropped it coming out of turn number six and we're now up to 17th. So the ascent up the field is well underway now. And this ascent is gonna continue as the Spaniard in the Toyota there gets a bit lively coming out of the S's and we're straight up now to 16th. And there's gonna be even more joy as the TX3 driver gets, I think, a six second penalty. So he'll be relegated right down the order when it comes to serving that one. But keep your eye on the Jag up ahead as one Jag gets a run on the other and he's going to get right out of the throttle to avoid going off the track. There is a nice example of how the stricter penalties are changing drivers' behaviour. And as you know, I'm a big fan of that. As we pass the Porsche serving his penalty, I'm really trying to work on my exiting of corners by just doing a better job of modulating the throttle. It's worked well coming out of that final corner as we're right behind the Jag coming into turn number one. I think there's contact up ahead and they're both going to go wide. So I'm right with them as we enter the S's coming up the hill. But I think, no thanks, I'm going to back out of that one. Cue the Senna quotes in the comment section. If you no longer go for a gap which exists, you are no longer a racing driver. Now there was a gap, but had I gone for it, there would have been a huge crash. So that's why I didn't go for it. But up ahead, there's definitely contact this time at turn number six. So I'm going to get the run down the inside here, having overtaken 14th to make a move into the S's to take 13th. Now that was a legit gap and I went for it. I slammed on the anchors, I got it stopped in time and as a result, I took the place cleanly. But that could be compromised here as I'm going to go deep into the hairpin at 12 and then I'm going to get something I didn't want a penalty by carrying too much speed into turn 14. Now all that hard work that's been done so far is going to be compromised on the next lap when I have to serve it but thankfully I wasn't the only one as we are up ahead I'm going to see that Audi and then pass it and make our way, if only temporarily, up to 12th. And I say temporarily, because there is a huge train behind us now as we start lap number four. Jumping to the end of the lap here as we come through turns 13 and 14, I've managed to pull a decent gap to the Italian behind. We've got to serve this penalty now, but keep your eye on the Spaniard in front here who's going to come in, which means I guess he must be on a two stopper. Either that or he's changing to the harder compound. So I pull off the racing line to serve the penalty and I'll go to 13th here as I get back up to speed. But as we enter turn one, the Ford finds itself on the outside allowing me to tuck in behind the Jag. 
Now we're going to go three abreast coming to the first part of the S's and the Italian does me a favour and backs out of it. I don't know what came over me there. Normally I'd pull out as you all know but I kept my foot in for that one. I took it out though to let the Ford through and settle for 12th. Just for now I'm going to try and stay with him and pull away from the Italian like we did before and settle down into a rhythm for the pit stops which having learnt my lesson from Autopolis in the first Super Formula race of the Nations Cup where I stayed out a lap too long and messed up the entire race I'm going to be coming in at the end of lap number 6. Rejoining the action here at the end of lap number 6 we're going to come into the pits. Now we've managed to stay with the Ford here happy with that as he was door number 8 and we were door number 16. Now just going to put some new boots on here no need to refuel and we're going to come out in 13th. There's no immediate pressure behind so I can concentrate on going forward and continuing to climb up the field. The aim of which is to get to the top 10 and we're getting ever closer to that. Up ahead though the yellow flags are out the BMW up ahead has an issue and I try and take evasive action there's a little bit of contact and I end up on the grass and as a result I get a 0.5 second penalty again. Oh, great. I can even see 9th, 10th and 11th up ahead our goal for this race but they are going to get further away as we serve our penalty at the end of this lap. Let me know what you thought of that one in the comments section down below. Would you have done anything different? For me, I don't think reacting at the time there was much I could have done. But this just again, I'm not going to go on about it too much. But the inconsistencies of the penalties here on Gran Turismo just drive me berserk. Now I really really like the level of these penalties. I love how strict it is. As we saw earlier, it's actually changing people's behaviours and it changes mine as well. However, it gives you mixed messages and sends mixed messages if we continue to let people do what they do at the red bull ring. And that's not anyone doing anything wrong, but it's just the game and people taking the full advantage of what the game gives them. So I've got no issue with that at all, but it's got to be consistent. Now we've served our penalty and are back up to speed. The Spaniard in the Lexus came out of the pits and slots into 11th. Not is all over though as we're only 1.6 ish seconds behind and we've still got 6 laps left to go. So it's time for me to get my head back down and try and close that gap. We're a couple of laps further on in this race now and we're just over a second behind 11th. Keep your eyes up ahead here as there's big contact between 10th and 11th into turn number one, pushing the Lexus wide. And we're going to close in on them as they go side by side up the hill. During this, the Finn is going to lose momentum and I'm going to take the opportunity here to go up the inside at the top of the hill promoting us to 11th place. One more place now and we'll be where we had aimed to be at the start of the video and a full 10 places up from where we started. Fast forwarding slightly here to the end of lap number 10 and starting lap number 11, as I look behind, Dr. DX is catching up on me. Now he qualified in second, half a one hundredth of a second behind the pole sitter so it's safe to say he is much much faster than us so trying to use my brain here I'm not going to fight it as I usually do I'm going to let him go the theory being that he's going to walk straight up to behind the guys up in front start to distract them and then they can all lose time and we can get involved I chose to lift off at the top of the hill there so we both lost as little a time as possible and you can see he goes off on his merry way and the battling almost begins straight away as we come into the S's. The Lexus there goes a little bit wide into the S's but gets away with it at this point. But you can see as we come down towards the hairpin here how much closer we are to everyone. 
That car at the front is the Ford GT and he is in seventh. So I'm feeling pretty optimistic at this point. And things are gonna get even better for us here as the Lexus is gonna go wide into 14, run onto the grass. He gets away without a penalty though, but then they end up three wide into the final corner. There's gonna be contact between the Lexus and the Merc. The Merc is gonna spin off as they both go wide there and we're gonna be promoted up into 11th. I'm going to stay behind the BMW as we come across the line to start lap number 12 and give them a bump draft as we both come through past the Toyota and I end up taking 10th place. So we have gone from the very, very back, 20th place, all the way up to 10th. Amazing, now I'm gonna try and hold on to this one. If we can, I'll be very, very happy with the result on a track that I do not consider to be my strongest. Now, as we come up the hill, you can see the Spaniard wanting his place back in the radar there. But we get round turn number six well, and as we come down the hill, when we come out of here, keep your eye on the Lexus. He's gonna let the BMW by, and I'm not sure what happened. He must have dropped a tire off the track or something as he comes through the S's, but he's ended up with a one second penalty. Now, I'm not sure why that was. Did you see what it was? If you did, let me know in the comments section down below. But up ahead, this changes the Lexus's urgency as he now starts to battle with the BMW, which is great news for us. And as we come down the hill here towards turns 13 and 14, the Lexus is going to go off the track once again like we've seen him do before, and he's going to be right in front of us now. Clearly rattled, as we come round this corner here, we're going to close right up on him now. You can see he's got 1.5 seconds of penalty there. As I say, clearly rattled, he gets on the loud pedal too much, and we're up to ninth as we come across the line to start the final lap. We're going to stay on board here for the final lap. Sorry for such a long video. A lot was going on in this one, and so much so, in fact, that I didn't want to edit anything really out and even though we think the race is over it isn't over yet now we have a good gap both up in front we've got about two seconds to the guy who did originally qualify in second and we've got about one and a half to the Spaniard behind and as I was saying earlier I'm just going to try and concentrate and bring this one home because when we started in 20th even with our door number, which is 16, I was quite ambitious saying at the start of this video we're going to go for 10th place. But if we can bring home 9th, I'll be really, really happy with that one. But as I said, it's not over yet. As we come into the hairpin there, you can even see 7th starting to creep into the screen. But my Achilles heel around this track and the main theme of the issues I had around here have been at turn 14. Now I'm gonna miss the apex here at turn 14 on those worn tires and I'm gonna get a 0.5 second penalty. Oh, had it just been a 0.5 second penalty, it would have been absolutely fine, but there's no opportunity to get rid of it before now and the finish line. So that's gonna get upgraded to a one second penalty, which as we cross the line here is gonna push me down to 10th place. So a frustrating end there, and despite coming from 20th all the way up to 10th with number 16 on the door, I'm only going to get 1,046 championship points. But more positively, we're going to get more DR on our journey to A+, which we hope to get in time for the new manufacturer's season for real. But for now guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.